Tov, Chavarim. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching the Noon Institute of Biblical Research. And I want to share some things here with you. I think we'll really bless you. And, um, and, and I'm really wanting to look a little bit deeper into this subject here. Uh, but uh, just something just came on my heart today to do a little research on Mount Zion. And as I've been doing it, I'm seeing scriptures that are really startling. And so I've, I'm definitely going back on this subject again very quickly, very soon. We'll be getting into news probably later tonight. Uh, but, I, but I just had to share a little bit with you now. If you turn with me in your Bible to Psalms chapter 2, and we'll look at verse 4, 5, 6, and 7 here. He says here, He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decrees the Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Okay, now we know that this is God speaking of the coming of the Messiah, Yeshua. He is the, he is the begotten Son of God. But <clears throat> what's fascinating to me, though, is God says that he sets his king on Mount Zion. Now, remember, an antichrist, or antichristo, as the Greek word is, and clearly, even Matthew, when he wrote in the Hebrew language there, he used the the uh, transliteration in the Hebrew language, and he used it as a Greek word, antichristo. And antichristo means a substitute or someone that is like Christ. It doesn't mean, in, in English, when we think of the word anti, we think of the word against, as someone that is against Christ. But in Greek, whereas the word is derived from, the antichristo has nothing to do with against Christ, but it is a similitude, it is a one that is a substitute, it is one like Christ, okay? It made more sense to me why then the Pope of Rome wanted so bad Mount Zion, because this being one scripture here, it's where Christ would reign from, is Mount Zion. And he believes that he is the vicar, vicarious filii dilia, which is written over on his triple crown there, which means, it's Latin, it means instead of the Son of God. Of course, the Roman numerals in that add up to 666, which is the number of a man, of course, okay? So, now let's also take, and I want to take you down to Psalm 78. Let me just find it here, 78. Uh, got it right here. And we'll begin with verse 67. Actually, let's back up to verse 65. Then the Lord awaked as one out of, uh, excuse me, awaked as one out of the sleep, and like a mighty man that shouteth by reason of wine, and he smote his enemies in the hinder parts. He put them to a perpetual reproach. Moreover, he refused the tabernacle of Joseph and chose not the tribe of Ephraim, but chose the tribe of Judah, the Mount Zion, which he loved. And he built his sanctuary like high palaces, like the earth which he hath established forever. Now, I can't say this is for sure, but when I read this and we see that God's desire, now we know that he's typing out Judah, the house of Judah, as Mount Zion. But could it be, this is, might be one of the reasons why we see this new uh, interest in the third temple being actually on Mount Zion and not on Mount Moriah. Of course, we have archaeological evidence that the, that the temple stood on Mount Moriah, uh, on the Temple Mount, and yet a whole new big push, and, and it seems very convincing. Uh, I know the gentleman that started this, this push about the, the temple being built there, and uh, he shared this with me back when he first began the project, and it's, it is very convincing. But it could be employed by the Vatican in order to justify building the third temple on Mount Zion, which the Vatican owns all of the mountain, even down the side of the hill and everything. There's space there. The Vatican owns enough land there to where they could literally build a third temple. And they may be thinking this because right here, and it says in verse 69 of chapter 78 of Psalms, and he built his sanctuary like high palaces, like the earth, which he hath established forever. 
I don't know. Like I say, these are just some thoughts, and I'm, and I'm working on this still yet, but I wanted to share a little bit with you. I'd also like to take you to Psalm. Let's begin with 113, excuse me, 100, 102nd Psalm, verse 13. Thou shalt rise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, this, the set time is come, for thy servants take pleasure in her stones and favor the dust thereof. So the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord and the kings of the earth of thy glory. When the Lord shall build up Zion, he shall appear in his glory. He will regard the prayer of the destitute and not despise their prayer. This shall be written for the generations to come, and the people which shall be created shall, shall praise the Lord. Once again, remember, the Pope of Rome considers himself God on earth, just like the ancient Egyptian custom, which where they get their roots from, from Egyptian to Persian to Mithraism and, and right into mixed up with Christianity. And of course, the Pharaoh of Egypt, where Hadad, their original predecessor, comes from, learned all the ancient Egyptian wisdom, uh, uh, wisdoms of Egypt, and they believe that the Pharaoh is the God on earth. So it's no wonder. Uh, but anyway, one other scripture I just have to share with you, though, is found in Isaiah. So if you would, turn with me to the book of Isaiah, and uh, we'll go to chapter 1. And uh, let's go to verse 25, and it says, And I will turn my hand upon thee, and purely, purely purge away thy dross, and take away all thy tin." And I will restore thy judges as at the first, and thy counselors as at the beginning. Afterward thou shalt be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. Zion shall be redeemed with judgment, and her converts with righteousness. Notice what he says there, though. Zion shall be redeemed with judgment shows that something on Mount Zion doesn't belong. Is that not right? If he's going to redeem it with judgment, he's got to redeem back the land that God gave them. And he, brings, he redeems it with judgment. Just remember the message that we spoke about yesterday, where God says that when he's speaking of, of Esau, and he shows that Esau, clearly according to Obadiah, that Esau is the Romans, the Titus, the Roman general, that came down and destroyed Israel. God says that was Esau that did that. It was their brother that hated them. And then God says in there that he'll bring judgment upon them when what? When the earth rejoices. Of course, the earth rejoices according to Revelation 11 when the two witnesses are killed. And that judgment is being brought up against them for all the evils they're doing to Israel. So God is going to bring, is going to redeem Zion with judgment and her converts with righteousness. I believe that could be a prophecy of the ministry of the two witnesses bringing out that 144,000, that elect of Israel. Be interesting to see. Anyway, I'll be studying deeper on this and hopefully I get to share with you more. I trust it's a blessing for you. And, um, and one other note here, just before I let you go there, um, don't forget the conference that we'll be at. We're, we'll be coming to America uh, before too long, and we are doing a conference in Newport Ritchie, Florida, and uh, that'll be on June the 19th and 20th. Uh, now, it is important, though, uh, if you're coming to the, to, to the meeting there, especially if you're staying at the hotel where the conference is, uh, I know that they will actually do a discount uh, for those that are staying at the hotel there, from what I understand, I don't know how much it would be, but there is a discount for that. And uh, not to mention it makes it a little bit easier because you're already at the same hotel. But, but the hotel there is, um, oh gosh, I forget the name. Let me just see. I know that my wife did some information here. Um, you do have to be registered by the 16th with the hotel, though, to, to be able to get the discount uh, there. 
And I thought they wrote on here the name of the hotel, but I don't see this in here. I'll see it. I'll post it here in the video though. So just be looking on there. So when I do the editing, you'll see that on there. But you have to register by May 16th. The actual conference date is, is June 19th through the 20th of 2015. Uh, you can email Sister Lisa Tesh, which is Lisa Peterson Tesh at yahoo.com. Uh, this is on our Facebook page too, by the way. Uh, you, can, you can go there and see that. And of course, you can email me as well if you have any questions, stephenbenoon at uh, aol.com. I'll post these uh, links for you on there. Uh, we will be doing a baptismal service on Friday evening after the conference there. I will be going down to the ocean. So if you are wanting to be baptized, we've already got several people wanting to be baptized uh, during this meeting. I will be going to the ocean, which is about 10 minutes away, and baptizing there in the waters there. Um, that'll be at the end on Friday evening. So if you're able to come, just bring a change of clothes. We don't have a facilities per se for that. Uh, you just want to be dressed modestly there. I, I, I'm not much for one baptized in bathing suits. I just have to tell you honestly, um, because we're doing something for the Lord and this is part of your own walk. So anyway, definitely come if you want to be a part of that. And then Saturday will be a full day conference there. And uh, I